I challenge all fighters who think they have something to tell between these ropes. I don't care who, I don't care when, I'm ready for everybody. Bader Hari is back. Two veterans clash in a grudge match eight years in the making. Bader Hari and Hesdi Gerges settle unfinished business. Glory 51, Rotterdam Ahoy, March 3rd. Check date and time in your area. Don't miss it. Fighter Heart. And the bad boy. Unfinished business. It's time to settle the score. Good afternoon, Amsterdam. How is everybody doing? Good to see everyone here. My name is Todd Grisham. I'm the lead television announcer for Glory Kickboxing, obviously in English. Uh, we'll have a, uh, our, Dutch, uh, our Dutch announcer from Ziggo Sport come up here in a little while, but we'll be starting this press conference in English. We will be airing live Glory 51 from Rotterdam, which airs March the 3rd on Ziggo Sport here in the Netherlands. And for the first time ever in the United States, we'll be on ESPN News, which reaches 85 million homes. So we expect a huge audience in the United States, as well as some of big viewership numbers here in Holland. It, of course, was nearly eight years ago when Hesti Gerges squared off against Badr Hari for the Showtime World Heavyweight Championship. In the second round, Hesti Gerges went to the canvas and was famously illegally kicked by Badr Hari. He was disqualified, and Hesti became the new heavyweight champion of the world. They had bad blood then. They have bad blood now and hope to finish the unfinished business in Rotterdam in a few weeks' time. Before we bring up our main event combatants, please welcome to the stage Glory's matchmaker and the managing director of sport, kickboxing legend, Cor Hemmers. Thank you, Todd. Welcome, everyone, on this press conference for Glory 51. Rotterdam Ahoy on the 3rd of March. Uh, this year, 2018, Glory has scheduled 18 e uh, 14 events. Uh, we will start with the first event of the season uh, next week, 16 February in Chicago, called Glory Number 50. Today, of course, we are here to uh, highlight and discuss uh, the lineup and the card for Glory 51, which is in the Netherlands. And, uh, of course, with a special attention to the main event between uh, Mr. Badahari and Hesdi Gerges. I hope you enjoy. Back to Todd to start the presentation. Of course, the main event is Hesti versus Botter, but the rest of the card in Rotterdam at Glory 51 is outstanding as well. Let's take a look right now. On Saturday, March 3rd, the biggest kickboxing organization on the planet returns to Rotterdam for Glory 51. Are you ready for glory? A dozen fights in one epic night with grudge matches hot new talent, and a brutal tournament. In the Super Fight Series, it's an all-out crowd pleaser as ex-welterweight champion Cedric Dumbe brings his electrifying style down on rising star Alim Nabiev. But will the ring be big enough to hold both egos at once? I will never be knocked out, you know? I'm too strong for that. There's a furious featherweight face-off as Masaru Glunder takes on Victor Pinto. The much-anticipated debut of welterweight hot prospect Mohamed Jaraya and lightweight star Tajani Bastati goes on the headhunt for another knockout. And Paul Nichols has got to be keeping a close eye now on Henya. And that'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. In the main event, big men bring the beat down as king-size Slovakian Tomas Mosny returns to the glory ring. And a welterweight tournament takes four men on the toughest route to the top as they take on the two-fight, one-night challenge. Vigneault, 
Jainson, Dannenberg, and Muay Thai mauler Tong Chai battle for a shot at the top dog, Bertel Grunhardt. Glory 51 Rotterdam, the best fight action from the best kickboxing organization in the world. Here's a look at the entire card, starting with our Super Fight Series on March 3rd in Rotterdam. A middleweight bout gets things underway, and then later, two fantastic Dutch-Moroccan fighters will be in the ring, Tajani Bestati in lightweight action, as well as the debut of Mohamed Jiraiya in the welterweight division. And then our main event, Cedric Dumbay, the former welterweight champion of the world, squares off against Alim Nabiev, who's coming off a famous victory over Nikki Holskin in his last bout. Then it's on to the numbered series, and as we do on every Glory show, we have a one-night, four-man contender tournament, this time in the welterweight division. Then it's a heavyweight bout, and then, of course, it's on to our main event. A European and world champion fighting tonight out of Egypt. Here is Hesdi Fighterhawk. Welcome to the stage, a man who's never backed down from a challenge. He has 50 professional wins, and he's the former Showtime heavyweight champion of the world, Hesty Fighterheart, Gerges. West side of this motherfucker right here. East side of this motherfucker right here. East side of this motherfucker right here. West side of this motherfucker right here. Better than nothing. nothing. Try to make something. Try to make something. Want in the streets is it cold for the band. I claim how many years it cost us so many tears. Want in the streets is it cold for the band. Let's get it. Jij denkt aan flessen en aan Louboutins. Aha. Misschien is dat wel waar je goed in bent. Terwijl ik doek hoe naar mijn moeder breng. Denk ik nooit meer terug als ik aan vroeger denk. Nooit. Zoveel titels, het kan een boek wezen. Ah. Mijn gezicht, het spreekt boekdelen. Ah. Ik geef het toe, heb nu een goed leven. Het beste hele boel, kan me geen moer schelen. Woe. Ik deed dit ooit vanuit de jongensstroom. In elke buurt, man, die microfoon. We dromen wel, maar neven pitten nooit. Ging van af als naar hooi, shit, ik flikker gewoon. Ja, laat hem met mijn niggas in de sicko doom. Party's groot, groot en blijf vechten. Ah. Voor jou en jou ben ik een rapper. Aha. For him and Hob and Nick a legend. Welcome, Hesty. Now to the other half of our main event. Now to a man who really needs no introduction. He has victories over kickboxing legends such as Peter Ertz, Sammy Schilt, Alistair Overeem, and Gokhan Saki. He's the first ever K1 heavyweight champion and a former Showtime heavyweight champion. Please welcome Bader, Bad Boy, Hari. Butter, Hari, Butter, Butter, Hari, but. Butter, hearty, butter, butter, hearty, butter, hearty, butter, butter, hearty, but, butter, oh, but it's a bad boy. Hearty, 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 hearty,
Hardy. Hardy. Veel mensen vinden me een bad boy. Sommigen vinden me fat boy. Je echte geeft voor respect, boy. Wat is het? Dus voordat je me test, boy. Pak zijp en spoel je back, boy. En doe maar relax, boy. Hardy. <laughs> Wat wil je doen? Oh. Fuck the roof. Oh. De mensen weten dat ik ben een kampioen. Oh. Wat wil je doen? Oh. Fuck the poen. Oh. De mensen weten dat ik blijf de kampioen. Oh. Gentlemen, before we open up questions in Dutch, if you don't mind, a couple quick questions in English. I'll start with you, Hesty. Considering what happened nearly eight years ago, what do you expect will go down once the bell rings on March the 3rd? A firework. I'm going to bring a what? Nothing less. Bader, we haven't seen you in a while. Obviously, you had a say in who you got to face first. Why did you choose to face Hesty Gerges in a rematch in Rotterdam? Excuse me. No, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, I think it's gonna be a good fight. You know, we uh, we had our uh, our history together, so uh, and everybody knows that some things happened. I think it was in a circ in a moment uh, in my career that. Uh, Things were still a little bit uh, wobbly, so uh, things happened. But uh, yeah, when, when, when I was coming back and Glory gave me the opportunity to fight again, uh, they were asking me, so who, who, which fight do you want, you want to fight at the moment? And uh, as he was making a little bit noise that he really wants it, so uh, here we are. And uh, we don't duck, we fight. So uh, I will see him uh, 3rd of March. A couple of quick English questions from our English journalist, John O'Regan. Thank you, Todd. Um, thank you, guys. If you can just have a, a couple of minutes in English. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I don't speak Dutch. I flew in from the UK this morning. Um, Cor Hemmers, if I can start with you, please. If you can uh, just tell me what this fight means in the kickboxing landscape and what is on the line here. Do we see a title shot for the winner or is it something else? Uh, like mentioned, uh, there is a, a kind of unfinished business in this fight. Uh, the gentlemen met each other in 2010. Uh, I think uh, the most important thing on the line is, uh, is, is uh, it is a matter of honor. You know, there is uh, not immediately, automatically uh, a title shot for the, for the winner. I think after this fight, let's first look at this fight. After this fight, Glory sit down with fighters and discuss uh, what the future plans are. Uh, determination on rankings and all kind of other factors will determine a title shot. But I think a matter of honor will be on the line in this fight. Thanks. Um, I'm hearing the words unfinished business a lot. The first fight was in 2010, ended in a controversial way. I was in the arena that night. I know that I've wanted to see the rematch ever since. And uh, I'd like to ask uh, both fighters, if I can start with you, uh, Bada, um, how much has that fight and this rematch been on your mind in the past eight years? To tell you honestly, it uh, wasn't on my mind at all because uh, for me it wasn't uh, unfinished business. It was just a fight happened and, uh, you know, some, some things happened in that fight. I got uh, disqualified, but, uh, you know, these are fights, things happen. So for me it wasn't like I had still some unfinished business, but I think for Hesdi it was more because uh, I think the win uh, was robbed from him. I think he took the title at that time. It was a Showtime heavyweight title. I think he took, he took it by a way uh, that I don't think even he didn't want, you know. He wants to fight for those kind of things. So I think for him it's, uh, it's unfinished business and I'm here to give him uh, what he asked for. So, but we all know how the first fight went, so we'll, uh, we'll see how the second goes. Do you, do you have it clear in your mind when you look back now how that fight finished? Uh, are you clear in your mind what happened and why it went like that? Well, you know, like I told uh, before, you know, I'm very, uh, in, in that stage of my life, I was, I was young, I was very emotional, you know, still looking for who you are and uh, still fighting with your feelings, emotions, and, uh, you know, you go all the way in everything. And so I think that is what happened. I think I just, uh, yeah, it just snapped and uh, he paid for it uh, at that time. And uh, the audience was a big loser, but uh, we're here to make things straight again. Thank you. Um, Hesley, if I can put the, the same questions to you, uh, if we look back, 
you know, we're hearing the phrase unfinished business, Cole's talking about this rematch uh, as a matter of honour. Um, how does it sit in your mind and um, where's your mind at right now when you look back at that fight and look forward at this rematch? Well, it was not a <coughs> uh, way we want to end uh, a fight. We want to win a fight. I think also not the way you want to lo lose a fight. So, yeah, it was already eight years ago. We are now, uh, I think... Um, uh, I'm, I'm um, yeah, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Um, how do you feel when you look back at that fight and when you look forward to this re is, is When, it I, look, when I look back at that fight, it was like a fight that did not end yet. And uh, we, we are here now to, uh, to, to end it in a good way and show the people that, uh, that we can end, uh, we can uh, fight the fight in a good way and show the, the, the youth and everybody that, uh, that we can do it in the right way, you know? And it's on us now and uh, we will bring a good show <clears throat> we will give the, the audience a good show. And if you get your hand raised on uh, March the 3rd, this isn't a championship fight, but would you be looking for a title fight after that? Uh, title is not so important to me. I think um, I, I want to do some rematches, you know. I think I'm now uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm focused again, fully focused. And uh, I had some p p personal problems in the, in the past, and uh, now everything is finished, and I think I'm... Uh, Focused for 100% on the sport, and I have uh, a, a long, a long-term vision again in uh, in the sport. And uh, I think I need to uh, set some things straight. And uh, three months is the first uh, thing I'm going to set uh, straight. Great. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for the time, and uh, good luck on March the third. Thank, thank you. One final English question, Botter. You have a knockout percentage of nearly 90%. Your fans love your tenacity in the ring, the way you finish fights. How important is, for, is it for you, not just to win this fight, but to win by knockout? Yeah, you know, knockout is like the most uh, amazing thing that happen, can, can happen in a fight to a fighter. You know, it gives you, a, it gives you a amazing uh, adrenaline. You know, it's like the, yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, like finishing a Mona Lisa. It's like an amazing thing to do. So... Uh, of course, I'm looking uh, forward. Uh, I'm looking forward, of course, to knock people out again. And uh, if I will start with Hesdi, the March uh, third fight, uh, I don't know yet. I'm still thinking about it. I need some rhythm in the fight, so maybe we'll go three rounds just to, to pick up my rhythm. And uh, but we will see if the chance is there. Uh, I will. Uh, I won't show him any mercy. So they're always is a big chance for uh, knocking somebody out. So uh, we will see how that goes. But uh, the plan is already there. So yeah, yeah, let's knock him out, yeah. <laughs> Good luck. OK, <laughs> now to you. handle the Dutch portion of today's press conference, please welcome from Ziggo Sport Television, Bas van Vendel. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> We love your English, but uh, we're going to do it in Dutch from now. We're going to do it in Nederlands. Okay, uh, so we'll carry on in Dutch. Please switch off your cell phones or stop. That's so fine. It is very silent mode, at least. So it's not a third press gathered here, so we would like to ask you to limit yourself to two questions. Jack Vargelder for Sylvie Roll. 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 Hesdi, um, is Hesdi. there a better motivation for you than that he is there any possible the better motivation think about it than a rematch uh, actually between uh, I think I think that's the best motivation uh, you can get really. for yourself that you uh, have what do you mean well, for uh, actually uh, yeah, as a preparation well I perceive it differently I think it's not like a starter I am motivated anyhow I'm always looking for challenges for myself and well, the past two years have been quite complicated. I'll keep challenging myself and this means not a challenge and I really enjoy it and it makes me feel I'm alive. And I've pushed it, indeed. And I'd like to thank my manager, Raymond Dade, because he enabled, actually, facilitated this uh, match, this fight. I'm extremely motivated. Actually, I do enjoy the attention. I do the preparation, do enjoy it, and actually, the climax will be on March the 3rd, and it will be a tremendous show. So, motivated, 
in shape. Well, actually, according to plan, uh, I've uh, made some changes in my training. I'm training a lot with uh, Musit, and actually, he is actually enabling me to outperform myself. I'm feeling well, my head is steady and strong, um, and I've been well in a rough patch, actually. I'm completely focused now. I can focus on the long term, and I haven't finished. I'm still fit, I'm still strong, I'm still young, so I'm looking forward to a couple of years more. Okay, Butter, you look well. Um, well, in shape, uh, are you less vulnerable than the last fight in Oberhausen? Well, it's your statement, but I reckon you do have some expertise. Well, my I'm feeling fine. Uh, preparation is going well. I'm a lot better in shape. I'm uh, faster. I've lost weight and I've made a number of adjustments. Of course, at some point, I had to look why I missed out. Uh, on the explosion, uh, I saw Remy Boyanski, he's among the public as well, and uh, the guys from the K1 know that my style was quite different than it was in the last couple of years. So, a new trainer uh, to do power uh, training, condition training, Mike, he stayed. Well, so I'm doing well, I'm fit, I'm fast, the body is responding as I want it to. Um, so I actually, uh, picking up actually where I left out in uh, 2012, I'm feeling fine. Thank you very much, Jack. Next question, Angelo from the NOS, I'll stand up. Angelo Terriel from Studio Sport. Um, no. Well, first of all, Badr Hari, a question for you. Okay, you are 33 years old. You haven't uh, done a lot of fights lately, so what makes you feel confident that you are ready for the rematch and a new shot, actually, on the title? Well, actually, um, actually it's... There's no rematch that has been set as of yet uh, with Rico Verhoeven. This uh, has not even been decided whether we are going to have such a fight. Uh, now, actually, all that counts is the fight on the 3rd of March. And I think th 33 years is not old. If we uh, see Roger Federer, he's 36 years old. and wins the Australian Open, um, so I am able to participate, and if we uh, take a look at Klinchko, uh, who was doing fine actually up until he came across uh, Joshua, well, then I think it seems as if we um, become mature, s more slower, and we last longer. And I think if I take a look at the uh, fighters within the division, I'm able to take on uh, anyone. There's actually little competition in this moment, and I'm going to prove this on March the 3rd. I do understand you first want to check out what's happening in this fight, but in the back of your head, uh, you might think that you uh, would like to have a, a shot at the title after all. Well, this is really a mistake. Uh, you can't think uh, for me. I think this fight is important. Enrico Verhoeven isn't currently. I am fighting for the pay, actually. So if they pay me well, then the fight with Rico is going to take place. It's simple as that. And talking about a belt, do I wish another one? Well, I do have a number of belts at home, and they are just gathering dust. So if the paycheck is there, then I'll be there as well. Hesdi, okay. Final question, 2010. You won the title, but you did so by disqualification of Bada. And I presume uh, that you think as well that you were um, actually not winning the fight at that particular moment. What gives you the, in, well, the feeling that you are going to win this match? Well, actually, uh, I hadn't lost it. 
uh, I was actually recovering in the second round. Uh, emotions ran high. Actually, uh, Butter kicked me when I was grounded. Uh, the first round was going well for Butter. The second round, actually, I was recovering. Um, the third round still had to start, so we are much more mature nowadays. I've been training, I've developed, uh, he has been developing, so we want to prove we both have something to prove. And if I check out uh, Bada, then I think he's really looking forward to it. I'm training uh, very hard. It's going to be a, a great fight. And what else can I say? I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Angelo. OK, question for Bada. Dodewey. Uh, you haven't been fighting for a number of years, Bada, and of course you have been thinking about your career. Well, I don't know why I haven't been fighting. Please enlighten me. Well, you had a lot of time to reflect. Uh, what are your plans for the years to come? Well, let me tell you, actually, top sports is really treasurous. Um, it's a hard uh, sport, actually. It involves a lot of injuries, um, so I can't really plan for a long period ahead. We have to take it um, fight by fight. Uh, nevertheless, I signed for a series of uh, fights with Glory, and I'm really looking forward uh, to do this. And I'd like to thank Glory as well. I think it's not really mentioned enough by me, but I think this is uh, just fireball. I mean, I haven't been part of the sport for a period. And if you want to participate, of course, it's really tough. Glory ensured, actually, that I was able to become a part of this sport again. So therefore, I'm, this is actually an additional motivation. And therefore, I think that currently, I am peaking, actually, um, in terms of maturity. So things do coincide, and I think if they had offered me a similar contract a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have taken it as uh, seriously as I do now. So I have reflected, and let's go for it. So the best is yet to come. Well, yes, I reckon we'll see some great performances. Thank you. Tim van Bonkstel, Telesport. How have you developed over the last couple of years as a uh, fighter? As a kickbox fighter? Well, this is a profound uh, question. Well, how did I develop? Well, as a fighter, I started developing myself when I was seven. I, I had my first fight in May 96. I was about 11 years old, so that's where the development started. And actually, over the course of the years, well, it's gradual. In the last couple of years, as a fighter, uh, I reckon I developed, especially in the personal uh, field, more even than uh, as a fighter. So I started training more seriously, considering it my job. Um, before, I thought, well, I'll do this fight, I'll have another car, and I perceive it differently now. So I think it's uh, mutually supporting. Um, what about your emotions? <laughs> oh, emotions are difficult to train, aren't they? Uh, it's hard to make such a promise. Of course, top sports, it's uh, on the fringe of sanity. Um, and this actually ensures the best fights and at times less pleasant uh, moments in your career. Uh, could it happen again, you think? Well, I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> if he is uh, laying in the right position. Well, some other questions. Jochem Letman of the ANP. A stare down is a classical feature of these meetings. Why aren't we having one today? Well, actually, I was pleasantly surprised when I was told that we wouldn't have one. But if the press <laughs> wants to, then we'll have one. To please everyone. Okay. That's decided then. Some other questions? Shirissa, 85. But I was wondering, what 
you do differently in this fight, different from the match in 2010. Uh, of course, I won't kick him uh, while he's grounded. Of course, I do know, as he's a great fighter. And I do appreciate, actually, that he, he's not ducking, he is not uh, hiding for challenges. I think it's a very uh, strong uh, characteristic. It was clear that I was a stronger fighter in the first round. He was uh, losing in the first round, but the fight isn't over till it's over. I know how he fights, I know his strong points, and I... It's weak points, and uh, know what's going to mark the difference uh, on March the 3rd. Hesdy, what do you reckon? Uh, what is going to make the difference on the 3rd of March? Well, I will do what I need to do to win. And, uh, but, uh, well, it's for him to decide what he wishes to do. Okay, thank you very much. There was another question over there. Mark Lanser, show news, show news type of question. What does your family think uh, but of you returning to the ring? Okay, that's a private matter, and let's keep it separate from sport matters. I'm uh, not going to answer this question. His name has been mentioned, Rico. Do you have a message for Rico? Well, I'm sure Rico is watching. He's watching TV all the time, even if he isn't on it. So I reckon he is watching. So a moment of shine. Well, he's a great sportsman. Uh, very important. Actually, he has shed a very positive light on kickboxing. So Chapo is a, a great opponent. And if he has the same job, then he's your enemy. Well, actually, no fight has been scheduled. Uh, against Rico, I have this fight against this gentleman right here. That's most important, and we'll see afterwards what comes up. Hi, I'm the most renowned sport reporter here, so my question is very important, and it's about your outfits. For some time, I've been looking how poorly dressed you are, so therefore I have come up with a solution, so especially for you, Butter. This is will ensure that you win this fight. And I reckon you're my ideal candidate. Let's start a sport line uh, together. Well, if you show the clothing on your body, then um, I'll wear this for sure. Well, I've seen brilliant uh, items, and you are brilliant. Uh, so let's do this together. Well, let's do so. Maybe we can have a talk uh, after the rest of the... Uh, public has left. Okay. I'd like to have these trousers, right? Okay, go ahead. Michael Duarte, MMA, DMA. But uh, it's not a warming up uh, fight, is it? Or do you perceive it as such? Well, I'll tell you the truth. Well, I think it's a rude question. Rico, that might be a warming up uh, fight. Hesdi isn't by no means. He's a serious fighter, a serious opponent. I have to take him into account. If you underestimate him, well, before you know it, you lose this fight. So it's no warming up fight at all. And if you check me out, my shape, then this will show actually that this is not a warming up fight and it should be mentioned as such. He deserves it. And I reckon if I'm not careful, I might lose this fight. Has he? A prediction? I'll do anything to win. Three rounds. Uh, three rounds. Any sooner, the better. Uh, no forecast from my side, actually. But uh, well, my forecast is the same. I uh, want to knock him out, and the sooner the better. But of course, we're willing to fight three rounds, and I'll overpower him. Okay, thank you very much. Lady on the left. 
It's a question for Bara Rosina from Phonix. You have indicated already that Hesdi is a serious opponent. You can't consider him as a warming up uh, fight. How do you perceive him as a fighter? Well, I can't assess another fighter. Being a fighter myself, that's quite awkward. Especially in my position right here and right now. He doesn't let go for those who don't know him and those who know him. They do know, of course. He's a bit monotonous, slightly, but he will fight till the last second. I must admit this, that's one of his strengths. And there is only few who have this strong characteristic. Okay, has he, is this correct? Well, to a certain extent it is correct. I do agree with Bada on one matter. I'm always there for the full 100% committed, and will other people let go? I'll carry on. So I'll carry on until the end, and that's my strength. That's actually what I do always show, and that's why I'm here. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck to you. Okay, we are going to wind up some urgent matters. We've been talking about the sport. Glory 51 is advertising it as bad blood. Um, but we have two professionals over here. How do you observe each other as persons? Well, but as a person, I don't know him well enough to assess him. Well, we have met each other, encountered each other a couple of times. We shake hands, we say hi. We don't um, start tearing each other's hairs, but there is a little hair after all, that's true. So that's actually what I make of it, and butter. What I think of as he, well, I can't really tell. I do check him out. I do check out his social media uh, channels. I do enjoy how he's relating to his wife and son. He's here amongst the public as well. So in this respect, I think he's a positive person uh, for his family, and it's very important. But it is actually only a general observation. And what kind of uh, weaknesses do you observe in his skills that you might take advantage of on February, uh, excuse me, uh, March 3rd? Okay, weaknesses. I think we shouldn't discuss it here. Of course, we do have a plan, a strategy, and we keep on working on this. And we do anticipate some holes um, that we will uh, focus on. But please um, enjoy the show on March the 3rd. SD, um, weaknesses in terms of the skills of your opponent? Well, weaknesses. In my training, I focus on my own strengths, actually to expand these, I try to mitigate my weaknesses. And in this way, I will take him down. So I'm just focusing on my own strengths and weaknesses. And it will be a great fight and will show to the world that we are able to handle a fight in a, in a correct m way. Okay, and we'll go for one round or three rounds. I'll be prepared. So it will be a great show. And it's great that Glory has promoted this fight. And bad blood. Of course, such a fight should be rematched after a year. Now, a lot of time has gone by. We've been through many experiences in our sportive and private lives. And now, 
I'm really looking forward to have this fight. Okay, good luck to you. Okay, so we are going to conclude, and of course, Bada made a promise, and I'd like to give the floor to Todd. You heard we are going to have a stare down. Core Hemmers, if you could please uh, make your way to the front. It happens March 3rd in Rotterdam at the Ahoy Arena. And to steal a phrase from our in-ring announcer, Tim Hughes, it's time for glory. I challenge all fighters who think they have something to tell between these ropes. I don't care who, I don't care when. I'm ready for everybody. Bada Hari is back. Two veterans clash in a grudge match eight years in the making. Bada Hari and Hesdi Gerges settle unfinished business. Glory 51, Rotterdam Ahoy, March 3rd. Check date and time in your area. Don't miss it.